So as responsible people, we've looked at your request for uh, the parking and none, none of the numbers add up. Uh, we just, uh, we're going to come up short and then we've become, to this point in time, we've never been a, a, asked for a penny to work or a, we paid all of our bills up. So we and Joe can tell you, we spent some serious money on Lot 2, when we built Lot 2, it was, it was at half a million dollars. So now we're renovating, it's going to be 170 some million. So all right. 170,000. Uh, so I hate to say it, and Pat's going to shoot me, but I just don't know how we can do it. No, I, Mike, I, I understand. I mean, that's not like. I'm not going to shoot. <laughs> okay. I very much appreciate so, the parking authority. I'm going to move over here. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that you are having some difficulty trying to make the numbers add up. As you said, you try and make it so that we don't, council and the borough doesn't get complaints. Obviously, you know that there are complaints, and they're significant and they're meaningful. Okay. There are problems, and you are aware of them, and you are trying your best as a parking authority and as individuals to address them. I know that. I point out to you that if you back away from the problem about 10 feet, I think you'll find that the numbers not only add up, but they add up much better than the numbers you're working with now. I know you don't, but you don't have anything on paper, right? And yeah, and I've given you, I've given you some some items to take a look at. I would urge you, you know, a former councilwoman sent me down to Brownsville, Pennsylvania, to take a look at it, and I remember driving through Brownsville, Pennsylvania. And I got the message very clearly. Buildings that were hollowed out, but the parking lots still stood. But by the, by the time I got down there, they weren't collecting anything because there weren't any businesses left. Okay, because it had all gone away. Uh, by the way, that wasn't entirely due to their parking problem, but it wasn't helped by it either. So, please, Keep an, open, keep an eye open mind to creative, innovative solutions. Changing the dynamic of what, of what you're doing by not, not asking uh, you know, short-term individuals, our customers, to hassle with the difficulties of the kiosk could truly improve the business environment in our community. That's a very important you know, objective. And you can do it without hurting the revenue stream that the parking authority relies on. You can also improve the situation for the residents who are on Chess Street and not, not all, you know, close to, but not in the business, in the, in the mixed use district. Those people are burdened by having long-term parkers that simply walk an extra 40 or 50 feet. And again, that's what council comes in. We have, council needs to work with the parking authority to set up a system that prevents people from use, utilizing all of the neighborhood parking spaces to park all day while they go to work. But, None of that can work with the system that we've relied on for almost 60 years. Since the parking authority for this reform, it's pretty much done the same thing. The world has changed around us. Let's adjust a little bit. So thank you. I'll tell you one thing. Some of the suggestions I've got over the last two months came to fruition. You have changed the, your virtual street, the street there to hang on the street because they have a parking authority hanging in the 
I don't think so. I know there's a fear that you that is palpable. That the authority fears that if it makes some changes, you know, obviously yet the three rules of parking that are immutable. One, everybody's got to park someplace. Drive, you got to park your car someplace. Two, there's no such thing. Oh, that parking has to be paid for. You can't have parking lots without having somebody paying to maintain them, shovel them, fix them. Have to do it. And if you if you don't have ample parking, it has. To, oh, I'm sorry. The third one is everyone wants to park in front of the door they want to walk into. That's the third one. Everyone wants to park in front of the door they walk into. If you follow those three immutable rules, you can create a structure that allocates the burden of paying for parking, rationing that parking amongst the competing you know, users, and truly improves the business environment by not bothering. How many, how many transactions are there? Eighty-seven. How many? Eighty-seven hundred transactions last month. You remember how much the average is? What one or two hours? Uh, one point four, fourteen minutes. So less than forty-five minutes. Right, less than forty-five minutes. You could get rid of what at least three quarters of the transactions if you didn't try and collect for the first hour or two. Three quarters of the people not having to worry about anything. Uh, this is not a place to I know. We so, need a lot of help. We need officers. We need, I mean, it's just. It will, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk, talk on this. this. Yes, yeah, so we're talking about that vibe. This is a parking lot. Right. It's, it's a moment for me to say I'm not going to shoot you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. Uh, for Amanda. I provide my report for the one who has questions. 